This video is brought to you by Squarespace. My last Delta Airlines long haul flight was in 2020, to be specific in February of 2020, just a month before the world shut down. I flew from Los Angeles to Sydney aboard their Boeing 777 and back then I had some really good things to say about them. This flight was probably the best long haul economy class flight I've had in the past 12 months. And I flew some amazing airlines within the past 12 months. I've flown on AMA, I've flown on Singapore Airlines. And I do have to admit that probably this Delta flight was the best economy class flight I've had. Which in retrospect is a weird thing to say about Delta, isn't it? But then again, just look at that flight. Large comfy pillows, hot towels, menu cards, pre-dinner cocktails in economy class? It makes you wonder how many of those service elements came back now that intercontinental travel has become normal again. I hope you're as excited as I am to find out and will join me on today's trip in economy class from Tokyo to Los Angeles aboard Delta's Airbus A330neo. Let's get going. Aviation geeks and frequent flyers, my name is David and welcome to this new episode of our review series Brutally Honest. Before we begin our trip, I wanted to briefly touch on the significance of Tokyo and Delta's history, or rather in Northwest Airlines history, with which Delta merged in 2010. Tokyo was one of the main hubs for Northwest Airlines. They were the first carrier to offer direct flights between the continental United States and East Asia all the way back in 1947. Back then, they operated a Douglas DC-4 from Minneapolis to Edmonton, Alberta, on to Anchorage, then to the Aleutian Islands, and onwards to Tokyo. The flight even continued from there on to Shanghai and terminated in Manila. And yes, this is considered a direct flight because you don't have to switch planes. What some of you might be thinking of is a non-stop flight. That's a direct flight without any stops. With the introduction of the Boeing 377 Stratocruiser on this route in 1952, Northwest was able to reduce the stops to just one in Anchorage. By that time, Northwest was even involved in the founding of Japan Airlines by leasing airplanes and crews to the new carrier. At that time, the United States and Japan also ratified an agreement where two US carriers were allowed to operate flights to and from Japan, even to countries other than the US. Those carriers were Pan American and Northwest Airlines, which back then was known as Northwest Orient Airlines. When Delta and Northwest agreed to merge in 2008, Northwest served a whopping 19 cities non-stop from Tokyo. In the US, they flew to Detroit, Minneapolis, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Honolulu, Saipan, and Guam. And in Asia, they offered flights to Manila, Singapore, Taipei, Bangkok, Hong Kong, Guangzhou, Shanghai, Busan, Seoul, and Beijing. After the merger, these routes unfortunately disappeared one by one, with the final two intra-Asia routes from Tokyo ending in 2020. Nowadays, Delta operates all their flights from Haneda Airport. Tokyo has two airports, Haneda and Narita. Haneda is considerably closer to the city, which is why I would recommend you use this one whenever possible for travels to and from Tokyo. From there, Delta is offering non-stop services to Atlanta, Detroit, Minneapolis, Seattle and Los Angeles, with their routes to Portland and Honolulu resuming this fall. For us today, it's off to Los Angeles, one of the most competitive routes out of Tokyo, resulting in very attractive ticket prices, especially off-season. I scored my ticket for just 52,000 yen one way, which at the current exchange rate is around 370 US dollars, including two 23 kilogram checked bags and free seat selection. In Tokyo, public transit, particularly trains, are the name of the game. And Haneda Airport has lots of them. You can reach the airport via the KQ Airport line, which goes to KQ Kamata and from there offers through service onto the KQ main line to Shinagawa, Tokyo's main railway station in the south. The KQ Airport line also offers another separate through service onto the Toei Asakusa line, 
through service in this context, meaning the same train continues onto another line. So you can stay aboard the train, but at some point the designation changes from a suburban commuter train to a metro train or vice versa. It's one of the reasons why Tokyo's rail network is so amazing, but it's a bit complicated the first time you experience it. The Toei Asakusa line, which is a metro line, then even continues to Narita Airport on the Keisei main line. It takes forever, but technically you can go from Haneda to Narita that way without having to switch trains. If you ever have to connect between the two airports, there are direct express trains as well, but I'd probably recommend you take a non-stop bus. If all of that is too complicated for you, which I don't blame you, uh, just do what I do and take the Haneda Airport monorail. It connects to the Yamanote and Keihin Tohoku lines at Hamamatsucho station and even offers non-stop express services to Haneda Airport, taking just over 10 minutes. And here's my favorite thing about the monorail. You exit the train, you go through the ticket gate, and you're right there inside the check-in hall of the International Terminal. No lengthy, convoluted, subterranean walkways to the station like at many other airports. You're there already. We're inside Tokyo Haneda's Terminal 3 right now. All international carriers operate out of here, as well as most international flights of ANA and Japan Airlines. The terminal was opened in 2010 and is one of my favorite airport terminals on the planet. In addition to the reliable Japanese efficiency at check-in, security and passport control, the terminal offers a replica of an old Japanese shopping street with local restaurants and souvenir shops to experience a final glimpse of Japanese culture before you leave. There's also a store up here selling stickers for your suitcase, which are notoriously hard to find in Tokyo. I would know. The terminal also has a publicly accessible, free-to-use panorama terrace. Actually, all three of Haneda's terminals have one of those, as do most airports throughout Japan. This country is a plane spotter's paradise. But now it's time for us to head airside. Before we depart, I also want to show you the Delta Lounge. Usually I do not showcase airport lounges when they're not included in the ticket price, but Delta just opened their brand new enormous Sky Club here at Haneda Airport less than 12 months ago. In contrast to other Sky Clubs around the world, this one offers the entire selection of alcoholic beverages at no extra charge. There's also a wide variety of seating options, an unbelievable view over the airport because the lounge is situated above the rest of the terminal, as well as a delicious selection of hot and cold dishes. And because I took this flight right at the beginning of cherry blossom season this year, special cherry blossom themed treats were offered by the lounge staff. We're also right above the gates Delta Airlines uses at Haneda Airport, so we can watch the arrival of their flights up close. Since most of Delta's flights to Tokyo arrive and depart at roughly the same time, they use the airport to switch planes between their bases. This Airbus A350 just landed from Atlanta and will continue to Detroit. And our plane is just about to arrive from Seattle to take us back to Los Angeles. And there it is. Tonight we're flying aboard N419DX, a brand new 2022 built Airbus A330 900 Neo. Delta currently operates 23 Airbus A330 Neos, all of the longer Dash 900 version, making them the world's largest A330 Neo operator. Delta's A330 Neos have a total of 281 seats, 29 of which are in business class, which is called Delta One, featuring a highly customized version of the Thompson Vantage XL seats. If you want to see what that is like, I highly recommend you check out the review by fellow air travel YouTuber Jeff Brooks. Behind that, you'll find four rows or 28 seats in a 232 configuration of premium economy class called Delta Premium Select, featuring Collins Aerospace MIQ seats. And behind that, the regular economy class cabin in a standard 242 configuration with the first seven rows designated as Delta Comfort Plus, which means extra legroom. My seat on this 10-hour overnight flight is 46A. The seats used in economy class are a rather basic version of the Collins Aerospace Pinnacle seats, which can also be found on most of Delta's short-haul fleet as well. Waiting on each seat already is a little amenity kit and a pair of slippers, as well as a blanket and a pillow. Being 180 centimeters tall, the legroom is okay. The seats feature a simple seat back pocket, a standard tray table, 
as well as a non-adjustable entertainment screen with the audio port and the USB port below. Code hooks are not installed. Universal power ports are available beneath the seats with one per each two seats installed. There's also a small but noticeable hardware box of the entertainment system down here, slightly reducing the room for your feet. And well, it's 2023 Delta, why do you choose such a bulky system for brand new planes? Just a second ago, I called this seat basic, and here's why. Some airlines have little extra pockets, which are very useful, or bifolding tables, cup holders, adjustable entertainment screens, which are great for when the passenger in front of you reclines, and code hooks. The absence of these features is in no way a major complaint from my side, but I do believe it's noteworthy in the context of this video. Before departure, the crew also handed out complimentary pairs of headphones. As the sun is setting, our time to leave Japan has come. Let's see if the evening lighting sticks around for our climb out of Tokyo. Welcome aboard and thank you for flying with Delta. The health and safety of our customers and crew is our number one priority and the shared responsibility of everyone on board. So before we depart, please pay attention to this important safety message. Be sure that all carry-on items are securely stowed in an overhead bin and place smaller items completely under the seat in front of you. Please keep the aisles, exits, and bulkhead areas clear. If you lose an electronic device in your seat, please do not adjust your This seriously had to be one of the most breathtaking departures I have ever had. I mean, just look at this photo I took during the climb. The backdrop of the orange evening lighting behind Mount Fuji with the glittering lights of Tokyo beneath. I have never been a big fan of selling useless merch with just a Simply Aviation logo slapped on it, so we never sold anything here at Simply Aviation, but I recently had the idea of making a calendar for 2024 with some of our best in-flight photos, including this one. So. Theoretically, would some of you be interested, seriously interested in getting one? Let me know in the comments. After takeoff, the crew started with dinner service right away by handing out bottled water and the cutlery sets. Notably absent compared to 2020 are the menu cards, the hot towels, as well as the pre-dinner cocktails. The way Delta's long-haul economy class meal services are designed is you get your cutlery inside a single-use tablecloth giving the whole experience a more elegant feeling. I also appreciate that the cutlery now is being made from sustainable materials compared to plastic which was used in 2020. For the main dinner service, Delta offered the standard choice of chicken or vegetarian pasta, where I went with chicken. We've got a generous piece of grilled chicken breast in a vegetable sauce with mashed potatoes. This was served alongside a barley and grilled vegetable salad, as well as a little cup of vanilla ice cream for dessert, and some white wine on the side. On long-haul flights, Delta offers complimentary beer and wine, even in economy class. 
compared to 2020, we now have gained a salad, but lost the bread roll and butter. Back then, I praised the meal service for its elegant presentation, completely neglecting the fact that it was actually very basic. And today's meal is very similar. It's elegantly presented, high quality and delicious, but very basic. After the meal service, Japanese green tea and coffee were offered. The lavatories are very basic as well, and they're clean and fitted with a changing table. Throughout the entire flight, the rear galley was staffed with flight attendants available for any beverage needs, as well as having a snack selection prepared, including sandwiches, biscuits, crackers, cheese, and chocolate chip cookies. Before breakfast is served, let's have a brief look at the entertainment system. Delta offers a wide selection of movies and TV shows to stream on demand, with the latter featuring large box sets with plenty of episodes. Music is available too, however there are no games. A state-of-the-art in-flight mapping application is installed as well. In-flight Wi-Fi is also available aboard Delta's Airbus A330neos, which includes the free use of messaging apps like WhatsApp. Paid data packages range from 7 US dollars for an hour of browsing up to 40 US dollars for high speed streaming the entire flight. Delta also offers $70 monthly subscriptions for frequent flyers and complimentary access for some American T Mobile customers. What I also haven't shown you yet is what's inside the amenity kit. You've got a pair of eye shades, as well as some earplugs, in addition to the pair of slippers I showed earlier. Now it's time for breakfast. Here we've got an egg and cheese breakfast sandwich, as well as some fresh fruit, accompanied by my standard breakfast combo of coffee and orange juice. The coffee aboard all Delta flights is supplied by Starbucks, make of that what you will. Again, I feel impressed by this service because it looks great, but I have to remind myself that this is once again very basic, it's just a hot sandwich and a little bit of fruit. Don't get me wrong, the quality of both meals on this flight, as well as their taste, was great, but for a 10 hour journey, you could make the argument that the meals were almost too basic. I'll leave the final judgment up to you, but I personally just think it would have been better to provide the crackers and cheese to each dinner meal instead of as a snack in a galley, and maybe add a yogurt to breakfast. But that's just complaining on a high level. Overall, I think Delta still offers a great product, although now I would certainly distance myself from my previous assessment of Delta offering one of the best economy class products out there, they don't really. Gone are the menu cards, gone are the hot towels, gone are the pre-dinner cocktails. The economy class cabin aboard the A330neo is good, with the most important features provided, but it's very basic. The same goes for the meal service. They got the basic parts right, but they didn't take any extra steps. And really, that's my conclusion about Delta's long haul economy class in 2023 in general. They do the basics right. They're very good at the basics, but beyond that, you won't find much else. The amenity kits are a plus, the free use of messaging apps is a plus, and the snack bar in the galley is a plus. So in comparison to other carriers, Delta would probably be somewhere in the middle in terms of quality, but compared to other North American carriers, which all don't go well beyond the basics, Delta remains the leader because the basics are their strength. Please. 
ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Los Angeles local time here, approximately 10.38 a.m. For your continued comfort and safety, please remain in your seat, seat belts fastened, until the captain's park your the gate, turn off the fastened seat belt sign, indicating it's safe for you to stand. So with that, welcome to Los Angeles. In five hours, I will continue on home to Europe aboard Air France's Boeing 777-300ER in economy class, a review I'm excited to share with you soon as well. So make sure you're subscribed and won't miss that or any of our other many upcoming reviews. Thank you very much for watching and coming along today. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video and if you found the initial excursion into Northwest Airlines history in Tokyo interesting. As always, I want to thank you for supporting us by watching our videos and especially those who are paid sponsors of our channel. Thanks to you, we get to constantly expand the number of airlines and aircraft shown on our channel and invest more time in each of our videos, which I hope was evident in the last few episodes of Brutally Honest, which I'm so happy about how they turned out. I'm so excited to share the next few episodes with you as well. There will be some exciting flights coming up. And I also want to extend special thanks to Squarespace for supporting us as a sponsor of this video. Squarespace is a powerful online platform which you can use to build your own website and brand. Start off by discovering the most suitable of their countless base designs for your idea and then customize every detail of your own little corner of the internet with their Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. You can update your site to fit any of your own unique needs, whether you want to offer merchandise, which you can design and sell directly through Squarespace, which handles everything from production to inventory and shipping for you, saving you time, money, and a lot of work. Or you want a website which offers something like appointments. In person or online, you can create and manage all of that directly in Squarespace. Be it private sessions, workshops, or group classes, Squarespace provides everything you need to manage your schedule, accept secure payments, send automatic reminders, and beautifully showcase your services. Draft your website for free today at squarespace.com, and when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash simplyaviation for 10% off your first website or domain name.